Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in the 149th Street at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today kicks off our tutorial series. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to start off in graffiti day one. We're gonna be going over how to do and practice basic tags, why you need to learn this, and how it's going to improve your graffiti tenfold. And you'll be surprised at how simple we're gonna keep this and how easy this is gonna be. Now, I've been teaching for like 16 years, and something I see consistently with new graffiti artists is they do all these crazy things to their hand styles. This type of thing happens when the graffiti artist is just starting off, they don't understand what's happening with graffiti and as a result they try to compensate by adding all of this style. We can keep it very very simple, very print font and still have a really good hand style. Just look at people like Chino for example. A lot of old school New York graffiti artists and a lot of graffiti artists in general have print font hand styles. Why? The answer is simply just because graffiti Graffiti is a font-based art form, and obviously, because of that reason, we have to make a letter. And letters, well, we already have an alphabet. So this is going to break letters into two major categories. The first category, which is your basic ST, which is going to stand for structure. And this category is going to be your typical ABCs, 1, 2, 3s, right? Next up, you have another category of letters, which is called variant structures, right? And some of these would look like, for example, R. That's a variant structure. Right? Still basic print font, but it's a variation. You have another variant structure R, still basic print font, but as you can see, it has a slight difference from this over here. Now, variant structures are set in stone. There's a set amount of variant structures, and you have to know each and every single one of these. And all a variant structure is, it's an alternate letter structure for the basic structure. And once again, basic structures are set in stone as well. Now, this is where most graffiti artists go wrong when they first start off. Once again, because they think graffiti is supposed to look a certain way, they try to do all this crazy stuff. So instead of doing a basic structure R, or a variant structure R, they may go ahead and do some craziness, and I've literally seen this before, where it's just like, oh, that's my R. What is that? What? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna tell me that's an R. This is toy. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so to avoid being this guy, you want to learn these things right here. So here's what you're going to want to do. It's real easy. Once again, we already know this stuff because of penmanship. So here's the basic guide you're going to want to use for your hand styles when you're first starting off. As you can see, we have a series of different lines. You have the cap height. We're going to go ahead and put a C here. And that's going to be pretty much the tops of your letters. Now, we have to go ahead and address the fact that graffiti does have different fundamentals than normal print font. So things are not exactly the same with this as they are in typical print fonts, which is why I'm going over it. This next series of dotted lines is called the mean line. So we're going to go ahead and put an M. From the distance from here to here is referred to as the X height. So we're going to go ahead and put X right here. Now this bottom line right here, this bold bottom line, this is called the baseline. And this is where the bottoms of your letters are going to rest. This is going to act kind of like a floor for your letters. Now the mean line is essentially where the middle of your letters is going to line up. Roughly round about this area. Now this is your A sender. And typically in normal print fonts, your A sender is reserved in order to breach pieces of letters into, say for example, the top of a lowercase d or b. Those would go into your A senders. You can do that in graffiti as well. That's not a problem at all. But with the A sender, this is really reserved for, you know, more stylized stuff where you need a little bit of extra room. Your D sender, once again, is reserved for anything that you want to breach to the bottom, whether it's a letter or more stylized stuff. Sometimes hand styles have pieces of themselves that kind of breach off real hard and kind of really pop out and it can go into the D center if you want it to. Now in normal print fonts where you might have a capital A that goes all the way from the baseline to the cap height with the center being in the mean line and a lowercase letter that would go to the mean line to the baseline, in graffiti, all lowercase letters are treated as uppercase letters, meaning they go to the cap height like so. This is so like that letters weigh out evenly and it also helps for negative space management, like I said, letter name weight and letter name positioning. This also means when you do letters like the letter G, lowercase, you're going to start like this in graffiti. Notice how the bottom of the G doesn't go to the descender. Now don't get me wrong, you 1 billion percent can go ahead and do 
a normal print font G in graffiti. Don't get me wrong, but notice how this has a lot less weight and you have a lot more negative space at the top, which can create issues, which is typically why lowercase letters are treated like uppercase. Typically, <laughs> I wanna make that perfectly clear. Now there's something else here. Notice how we've been using this marker for this size of tag. Something a lot of newer graffiti artists don't think about is nib width. They'll go ahead and they'll do a tag this big with a tremendous marker, and suddenly it doesn't look as good. And that's because they didn't consider how big their nib is is for the size they're doing their tag. Some tags don't look good scaled down or scaled up. You always have to consider the tool you're using. You have to not only consider its size, but the line it creates. Because as you can see, this chisel tip is gonna give us a much different line than say, this brush pen. This can allow you to do different things. Now I'm not gonna pretend to be a master calligrapher, but this angled nib can certainly allow you to go ahead and do different things. You see how we have that thin line right there? And then these bolder lines, you're not really gonna be able to get that with a rounder nib. Believe it or not, there are fundamental differences as we recently just discussed. It's just the way you lay out your negative space management Management, your letter and name weight. In typography and other font based art forms, negative space management is referred to as kerning. And it's because kerning refers to the space between two letters, as to where negative space management is the management of all negative space. So that's not only the space between two letters, but the space within a single letter. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear because I can't overstate this enough. You can have more negative space in your basic print font. You certainly can. But this comes with a little bit of a balancing act. That's kind of how all art forms work. You can do anything in art, right? That's the beauty of art but you have to know the rules before you can break them you have to know the balancing act because as you can see there's a certain effect that takes place once you start getting into the spacing of things if I were to just simply write out the word grim there's a reason we look at this as being a word and it's because of how it's spaced notice if I go ahead and write it like this we're not really gonna read this as a word and that's because of how they're spaced now obviously this is a very dramatic example but this illustrates the point well and just show the other extreme if we write it too close to one another you'll see how it distorts the letter structure so negative space management and letter name positioning are very important it can highly affect not only the way the word reads but also affect the letter structure and obviously affect flow and that's how fundamentals and art forms work one fundamental oftentimes heavily affects all of the other fundamentals which is why it becomes a little bit of a balancing act when you mess with things now it's important to know how all of these things work we demonstrated negative space management right here right and as a result we also just discussed letter and name positioning, and we also discussed letter and name weight, as well as letter structure. But we haven't really discussed flow. Now, when it comes to basic print font, everything flows out of the box. If you're having trouble with flow, it's because you're not keeping it simple, and you're trying to add style, which is gonna be an issue. Because let me explain to you, style is just the exaggeration of the fundamentals. That's all it is. So if you do not know the fundamentals, then you cannot effectively add style. And that's where you get the more toy stuff. Now that we went over all this information, how do you practice hand styles? It's pretty simple. First things first, you wanna really familiarize yourself with this grid. Once again, this is never something you're actually gonna be drawing when you're, when you're utilizing it. Like you're not gonna have somebody come up and be like, hey homie, hit my book, and then you're gonna draw out this grid and do your hand style. That's not going to happen. So you want to dedicate this grid to memory. From here, you want to just practice these basic print fonts using this grid. And you want to make sure you're trying to write the letter as neatly as possible. Don't really try to add style. That's going to give you too much to juggle. The key here is we're studying how the letter works. Because later down the line, once you get advanced, you'll see that a lot of this gets turned on its head. You might see people who don't go ahead and put their letter straight across. Instead, they do it at an angle or they do it at an arc. But at the the end of the day their baseline is still the baseline it's just art or it's slanted you may notice people do do lowercase or even capitals at the mean line but they balance it some other way there's always a give and take with more stylized work there's always some give and take if you guys want to look at a couple of examples if we look at the scene tag it's no coincidence that the top of his s aligns perfectly with the middle of his e's the top of his s starts at the mean line that's him adding more style but he's still addressing the mean line the cap height and the baseline as well as the descender with the end. Notice how his baseline is arced very slightly 
Bailey. And you can kind of even see this in the underline. Usually the people's underline in graffiti reflects their baseline. Usually. And we can see that here where his S dips down and hits this arced baseline. And then the actual bottom of his S meets up with the baseline for the two E's and the left side of the N. And then the right side of the N hits the descender. And we can see the same thing here with ear snot. His E is tremendous. It goes from cap height to descender and then everything else follows kind of cap height to baseline. With the center of his letters kind of aligning around the mean line. So as you can see, these basic fundamental things that I talked about are used throughout every form of graffiti. And all style is, is just the exaggeration of these basic things. But you gotta learn these basic things first, so spend a long time learning this and you will be perfectly fine. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys tremendously for watching. This is kicking off our tutorial series where I'm gonna be teaching you guys everything you need to know about graffiti. So be sure to watch the full playlist. If you guys have absolutely any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. I try to be as active as possible and respond to as many as I possibly can. This series took a ton of work to put together, so I would really appreciate it if we can try to get this video to like 400, maybe even 500 likes. I would really appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below, and be sure to share this video with your crew and friends who might be interested. Post it on the graffiti forums you hang out in, all that good stuff. And be sure to subscribe if you're new here, because once again, we have a tutorial series coming out. It's going to be the best information you can find online about graffiti. So it's consistent quality content. I hope to see you guys in the next one, but until then, peace. Peace.